Hello, my name is Daniel Bautista. I'm the CEO of The Blind Designer. We're a small design firm comprised of myself, Anna Cristina Zuluaga, the blind designer herself, and her oldest child is apprenticing from her. We subcontract out the manufacturing of our bespoke jewelry to partner gold and silversmiths locally. We also built our own gemological laboratory to ensure the quality of the gemstones that we purchase. I do all the photography for our business our Instagram account and our website. And we built our own studio here during the height of the pandemic, along with the gemological laboratory. We would like to thank Women Icon, powered by Times Women and World Women Council for these five prestigious awards. Now I'd like to introduce Anna Cristina Zuluaga. She was born in Davao City in the south of the Philippines and now works with me here in Metro Manila. Thank you very much. So I'm born in Davao City, but my ethnicity is Tausug and Basque. Tausugs are from Holo Zulu while the Basques are from the northern part of Spain. We were a global Trojan family due to my father's work, which is nice. But I've been diagnosed with Neurochette's disease and Stargardt's disease. Two of the most rarest diseases in the world with no cure or treatment whatsoever. So I'm blind, I'm deaf, most of my veins have collapsed and I am at the end stage of neurobichettes. Although my life is shortly lived, I have met the most interesting and most talented individuals anyone can dream of. So I'd like to thank Women Icon, powered by Times Women, and the World Women Council for the distinguished awards that you have bestowed upon me. I'm ever grateful, Christina. All four C is the only criteria we have when it comes to buying or considering the beauty of children. Is it about the curves? The symmetry, the uniqueness of the design. This is the story we want to say, but we can never tell. Our choices, our decisions, our past, what we represent and who you truly are. That is beauty. But what it means to me is, number one, as a person with uh, certain disabilities and certain immune diseases, I hope that there are other people like me. It, this brings inspiration to other people who devalue themselves just because they are not like 
they lack their sight, they lack, they lack um, their ability to hear, um, uh, whatever disability that, that they have. Um, a lot of a lot of um, a lot of differently able people are just stuck in this little fishbowl because society says that this is all you get because you can't you can't do what a normal person person can do because it feels very limiting. It's not very you. limiting. Mm -hmm. It's just um, so. I hope this story. A blind designer um, from the Philippines, who's also who, man, who also happens to be deaf, <laughs> and would and you know I, I do have Bichette's disease, which is a very rare vascular disorder, so rare that it's a footnote in medical textbooks. Mm. There's no cure for it, technically just counting, you know, so. It took me a while to get here. I was, I was, in, when you're not born blind and deaf, and you see, and you've seen the world with perfect eyes, and you've heard with perfect hearing, and then one day it was taken away from you. It's very devastating. It's devastating enough for you to lose focus of what you're supposed to do, what your purpose is, and everything else. So it's not easy. So I'm really hoping that if you're watching and you know you're, you're having a hard time because of physical limitations or mental, mental limitations, it's a matter of understanding what you want to do, what you want to contribute, because you have every right to contribute to history, which I know I did. <laughs> and these awards actually help me um, validate that, that I made a difference, a contribution. I moved the world even just for a second. And that's important. In spite of? In spite of all the difficulties that I have and all the challenges that I have to go through, Every day, little me made a difference. It's a passion. It's there. The passion's there, mm -hmm. and you wanted to make a difference. And that's really inspiring, mm -hmm. especially for those who feel so limited. Yeah, and I can I can relate. Um, uh, what do you call this? I I had a um, I have a I had a coworker here in the Philippines, and every time we had a a, a client coming in. They would hide her because she was on a wheelchair. And they were very embarrassed to have someone like that in the office. I was like, I'd be proud to have someone like her because she's amazing and she's, you know, why do you have to hide? You're not defined by your physical yeah, exactly. abilities or disabilities. Exactly. And she was one of the best staff I've worked with. And to hide her in a closet, just because some some clients coming in, and that just opened my eyes. Like, wow. Yeah, and it's really hard because I understand when yeah. people see you and they don't, you don't have an eye patch or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, you, they think that you are physically fine, but nobody understands what your perception is mm -hmm. and what you're going through. Like, I can't see a face. I understand. I can see what's going on there. Yeah, but I just I can't, and that's how I work. I work with like this little tiny portion of my left eye and like ten percent or like out of like a hundred percent. Yeah, like, so it, it's like this and uh, design. Yeah, I draw and currently right now I discovered something else that that's not just drawing, but putting stones together on a light box and take a photo and it actually looks like finished jewelry. Beautiful. What does the word the phrase game changer mean to you? Ah, the first award. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the game changer. Um, well, a game changer is really more of a person who was able to make notable changes in a certain industry. 
So, for example, for for me, it would be design because I don't want to I don't want to be boxed as a jewelry designer. That's just one. In my past life, I was a learning designer. <laughs> in the, in my other life, I was a I was designing quality control. So everything, you know, in my history dealt with design. So I don't want to like box myself as a jewelry designer. Who knows? Probably next week I'll be a cobbler. But yeah, the game changer aspect. Um, and I'd really like to thank um, Times Women and Icon Women for giving me such a, um, yeah, such a distinction for being a game changer, especially for um, the jewelry industry here in the Philippines, because it what we what we started two years ago changed the landscape of how Filipinos look at jewelry, how they value it. It's a, it's it really like made an impact, not just for the consumers. But for the others who have been in the industry before, you know, before we established ourselves here in the Philippines. So, how did your work change the industry specifically? Um, bespoke design and bespoke jewelry predate me. Would mean bring a copy of a magazine with a jewelry in it and let them like this. Is what I want. Um, in my case. Jewelry is personal. Everything had to have a story. You just can't tell me or send me a photo. Can you make this? I always say no. I turn people away when, you know, I choose my clients. Um, that's something that, you know, here it's just, okay, I can do it. I can execute it. Um, here's the final product, pay. And that's it. But for me, when when clients come to me, it's really more of I want a piece that represents this part of my life or this part of my personality that nobody knows. It's a secret. Or a story that they've always wanted to tell, but they can't. And they would tell me what it is, and I'd execute it via the jewelry. That's beautifully said, because mm -hmm. you basically and it's as personal as a, as a tattoo some yeah you can, you can actually say that it's as personal because yeah. it's a piece of art mm -hmm. and you embody and you and you capture the story of this person of your client and mm -hmm. make it into jewelry yes because a lot as you mentioned earlier like not a lot of clients know what exactly they want yes so so you get ideas from them, mm -hmm. get it out of them, and then you, you create yeah. this with them. So it's a partnership. And a yes, definitely. The client is always part of the process. They just can't leave. Like They just can't fill up the form um, and leave. No, because there's certain, we have um, months of retiration yeah. before we actually execute or make the ring or make any type of jewelry. Which is so beautiful because you build the story with the client mm -hmm. and you create the piece mm -hmm. and it just becomes so personal for them. Yeah. You mentioned earlier that your work has changed the industry. Mm -hmm. How does your work currently impact other industries in the Philippines? Ah, okay, connecting to, all right, jewelry as, you know, the first one would be sourcing, where we source our gemstones. Um, educating people that there are several types of synthetics and not all synthetics are cubic zirconium. <laughs> so there are, there are lab grown sapphires that are actually grown in a laboratory, in a proper laboratory with all the chemical components of a real sapphire. It just so happens that they were grown in a lab versus cubic zirconium, which is just meant to look like a sapphire. It's not a sapphire, it's just Keep it going, yeah. so, so education, I you know, just that really like went went in there, and then um, we also were very 
conscious about getting conflict free gemstones. So, you know, Danny and I are in Africa, but not together, like se separate, separate years and separate experiences. But it was the same thing that we've seen. We've seen children, amputees, blood diamonds, and everything. And that was one of the major attributes I th that, that changed the perspective of, uh, of Filipinos when it comes to ge uh, gemstones. Before, you know, I get messages from from followers saying, you know, all I know is diamonds. I didn't know about Morganite. I didn't know about the stones that you're posting, and it's they're really pretty. And then they, you know, and I go, and they are a hundred times rarer than diamonds, and they're so undervalued because everybody just knows diamonds. So you know that affects a lot. Because once you introduce how beautiful a bad rash of sapphire is versus like a plain white diamond, the demand for that just really increases. increases. Mm -hmm. And you'd see you'd see um, other jewelers do the same pattern, like they get they get into pipe parasha, they get into when pipe parasha is difficult to get, they get to the closer gem, which is a garnet. Mm -hmm. So that that that's that alone in the gem in the gemstone industry alone, that that. Yeah. Next would be um, packaging. Mm -hmm. um, we really wanted something premium. We wanted the luxurious feel, so that the client feels like it's worth it. Number one, and it's exclusive, and it's special. So all of our all, all of our boxes are bespoke. And <laughs> the person that actually made our boxes is not a box maker. They're fur the furniture makers who lost their, their business during the pandemic. So we actually helped this family through go through the pandemic by them creating the boxes. These are local resources. Yeah, local resources. And you're helping small yeah. businesses, yeah, small so industries. Small, it's a cottage industry, yeah, yeah. but we help one family, that's just one, for the boxes. And then, um, what else? We have really talented um, smiths here in the Philippines. Um, the sad part is they were like, the 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 stunted growth, and they're, they're not willing to experiment because of, you know, it, it takes money to experiment on things. Yeah. You know, um, silver may be affordable, but if you can't sell it, then it's just dead weight. But how can you how can you improve your technical method if you're just you know doing the same thing over and over a solitaire, a, a copy of a Chanel? It becomes you know, it becomes like a factory reproduction. It doesn't become yeah very yeah. Good. It's just. They, they don't go a step further, it's just that. Um, so when I began, I it was really rough with the with some of the Plateras because they would always say it's impossible. And I go, no, because I made that before. <laughs> so I know it's not impossible. So it was really more of a learning experience for them and a learning experience for me. Because we have, we do have different terminologies. They say something I don't understand. And I say something that they don't understand, and we teach each other. So again, it's passing of wisdom and knowledge from my end to theirs, and they were able to step up with a technicality, with 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 a, with a craftsmanship. So okay. they, you know, we I have goldsmiths. Um, that went to a level one solitaire type pieces to very complex, you know, very um, intricate styles. So I think it's one of the one of the things that really impacted. Because you mentioned sourcing, the yeah. industry, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, the packaging, mm -hmm. and also the craftsmanship. The craftsmanship. Of the goldsmith. Mm -hmm. um, this is also with um, the gems. We want to make sure that we were getting what we were paying for. 
So we built a lab. We built a lab. It's meant to be just for us, but it just unraveled that nobody really has a um, working lab. It's not just about me. It's also about the advocacy that we push and, or re-educate society with. Um, we strongly go behind the banners of using conflict-free um, gemstones and other materials. Uh, we strongly go for um, empowering women and empowering people who do not have certain capabilities to make their dreams come true. And of course, due to my diseases, we also push advocacies for awareness for certain diseases such as star guards, which I have, and um, what blindness is, and how I'm also deaf due to Bichette's disease, neurobichette's to be specific, and I'm at the terminal end of it all. So we also do advocacies for sustainability. Um, what's the use of making all these beautiful things when, um, when our environment is just dwindling and it's affecting us in our daily lives? We have gotten into a point where planting trees won't solve the problem anymore. Global warming is not fiction, it's real, and it's there, and we need to address it. And we do our part by making sure that everything is ethically made. The pandemic is still here, and we constantly remind people to be safe. All of these are not part of our business, but we are citizens, global citizens, to be, uh, to be fair, and we wanted to, want to contribute to make the world better. More about the inspiring personality of our group. How and what legacy would you want to leave for your children and the next generation? What contribution would you want to be remembered for? These are the questions that you need to ask yourself.